talk about equity is that any good capture to touch uh, on, uh, on the topic of, of the impact uh, that robotics and, uh, and AI can have uh, on the um, on the social economy and the society. Uh, so money is right, so I tend to be uh, <coughs> a lot of time with the presentation, but I will try to, to, to cut the along the very long story talk. Mm -hmm. We, we, as you have seen from the agenda, we will uh, touch uh, both uh, the, the technological aspects involved by the ongoing change in the technological scenario and uh, some uh, economical aspects and potential uh, evolution of the scenario. Because I'm pretty convinced that, uh, um, that we, we are actually, for instance, uh, I will talk about it. Now, if you see here, yeah, we will have societal impact as the legal aspect, but also the financials and, and the uh, properly, I would say, the operating system of the economy that, that could be changed uh, by, by what's uh, uh, happening. And many affiliations. Uh, so this, uh, um, Basically, my this talk uh, will be divided into this introduction will be divided into two parts. First, I will really uh, outline uh, the, the technological scenario and the scientific scenario. And then uh, I will drop some uh, hypotheses uh, about how the, um, the, the, econo the economy and the society could change uh, as, a, as a continent. So robotics is, is and there is a certain standpoint, uh, nothing new. So the idea of having some kind uh, of, of computing system uh, in the past uh, built by gears uh, and levers and today by microprocessor, moving something physical and doing some useful tasks is not new. I, I would say that in the latest five centuries, the main part of and recently, as you know, this uh, uh, paradigm had a tremendous impact, basically exploiting two sources of, of knowledge, mechanical engineering, computer science, uh, and quantum engineering. And this uh, led to a, a radical transformation of, of, of manufacturing. It's almost impossible to building a car or a washing machine without uh, having a uh, robot. Uh, what we um, what we are recognizing now is that uh, thanks to Internet of Things, some machine learning and some uh, artificial intelligence <coughs> function that before couldn't be automated are now possibly automated. And this is led to, to many forecasts on the evolution of the market, which more or less are Oh, almost of them are quite close to the other, so they talk of 60, 60 65 billion uh, of revenue for the robotics industry by the end of this decade or beginning of the next one. But uh, what uh, I really think that this could be just the beginning because the potential for embedding intelligence uh, and also low level of automation into any system starting from the high. Uh, so it, it's really improved it's really uh, going to be much like the price and if you only think about self-driving cars, self-driving cars uh, uh, actually means that uh, in 10 years from now, uh, the, the, the turnover of the robotics industry or one sector of the robotics industry could be that uh, of, of, the, of the automotive industry. So, and these changes are basically led by a number of things, which are basically inter the Internet of Things, some uh, machine learning, and some... Uh, and this is uh, important because uh, um, we, if you think about uh, uh, how manufacturing is... Uh, um, is implemented today, even in, at the top of the supply chain. So if you think to assembly of cars or phones, typically we still have a versatile production, but not 
we don't have a value for many decades in the industry that have talked about a uh, lot of want and mass customization, which means luxury goods, more or less, at the price of mass produced goods. Uh, so far, this was not, uh, uh, has not been possible. The real potential of the industry 4.0, which means exploiting some robotics uh, function like vision and manipulation that are still not ready for your home or for the wild, but can work in a structural environment because the, the strength of industry or hospital. So there are a lot of environments, or even cities or highways, is that they, you can instrument those environments and you can structure them in a way that they can allow the limits, the limited intelligence of the current artifact to work. And this is something that is still untapped because in perspective, today you have the um, uh, think about the uh, Zara or HM. No? So the, 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 their strength is, uh, is that they can manage very well in a very flexible way a supply chain that still ends in some uh, low, uh, low wage country uh, around the world. So what we may think uh, is to have uh, online personalization, for instance, of uh, scooters <coughs> or cars or washing machines, but also clothes, uh, at the cost which is uh, close to the cost of mass production. So if you think to, to the uh, Zara or HM model, which is basically a very sophisticated ICT system managing the supply chain, which ends up in manual people suing together, people manually suing together the clothes. That model will really reach the end point. And this opens enormous possibilities for, uh, for, our, uh, for our industry, basically. Now, because Europe, I mean, the main countries in Europe are still exporters. So typically in Europe, in the economy of the world, uh, it's the country which produces goods. Some countries, which currently have more problems, produce low uh, technology goods. Some other countries uh, produce high technology goods. Some countries like Italy produce some high technology uh, goods and some fashion goods. Uh, what we really could think of, thanks to these new possibilities opened by the uh, in what is called industry uh, 4.0, but is applying what we know about AI machine learning and the Internet of Things to current industry. So, in principle, we can completely revolutionize the manufacturing process of everything and also the distribution. Thanks to AI, also the service deployment uh, uh, can, can be changed. So, we are, in a certain sense, uh, when people is thinking about the impact that robotics or AI can have on the economy and society, uh, could be uh, better and what could be uh, the possibility to really change completely the organization of the economy and the society. Because we can really see um, changes that can be compared to what happened with the new economy, so with the web economy. But the web economy was about uh, um, uh, managing information. Uh, this new revolution is about managing things. So it's about uh, digitalizing the physical world. And if you think of what happened in 20 years, okay, the internet was invented uh, 40 years ago, but if you think what happened in the latest 20 years in, in a range of industries, uh, from including retail, uh, a final consumer retail, what is also happening now with Amazon, it seems most uh, of the uh, retail trade on the world. So it's really. And then we have that other aspect of the problem, because uh, if you look at some publications like this one, um, it seems we are going to have, uh, because people are sometimes, sometimes worried by unemployment created by robots and they ask. I, I'm not so worried 
because I think that we are facing problem that uh, uh, with a start, with a today's technology we are probably not able to solve. So I, I, I want to be a bit provocative. But the problem is that this uh, exponential growth of the population, the fact that billions of people are trying to achieve uh, the level of consumerism of people in the third world. Uh, so it's going to create a, a pressure on the ecological stability of the planet, because we're talking about that, and a, a level of contention for resources that uh, we never experienced before. So the next thing is that uh, things like this, that again, is something that for decades has been, it's like a lot of wine or the mass customization, something that has been talked about for decades, the fact of having a circular economy, so not basically extracting new, new materials uh, from, from the earth uh, or using more water, using more oil, but basically recycling the material, which, which is a lot. But it is uh, already in the manufacturing cycle and in the landfills. So um, before this was very difficult to do, mainly because it was very uh, difficult uh, Pick of a car, a car at the end of life, now you typically pack it. Uh, so you, you crash it. In principle, it would be nice to dismantle it piece by piece. This was a, and made by hand, was a, a, a unbeliever, so was not practical from an economic standpoint. Made uh, with uh, some vision in a factory with some tracking and some, it's now possible. And this is a, and then also other aspects, uh, you, you know that uh, in Europe, now this is happening out of Europe, but in Italy, for example, or, or in Spain, uh, or in most of Europe, uh, during the, the um, peak uh, phase of urbanization, a lot of very bad suburbs were built. Again, in construction industry, you could really make some, uh, well, this is, these are utopistic dreams uh, of the 60s, of the 70s by major architects like Richard Rogers. So, prefabrication of houses uh, is not particularly attractive for people if uh, you cannot have a lot of one customization. So, if you can prefabricate an house, uh, and, uh, one by one. So there are still problems. I promised to say something uh, about uh, um, technology because uh, uh, the reason why it's probably that the, um, the impact of robotics will be first in environments like uh, the um, like. Uh, are structured, like the manufacturing sector, is that uh, in the wild, this is a lot, have a lot of problems. So people remember from the internet, uh, from YouTube, you know, all these fun things. But what is really impressive for me is that uh, according to a study, a study performed by the University of Milan, in the background of, of the competition, uh, the average number of people they were operating was uh, Dumb robots was 10. So, a bad joke is that the military wanted a, a dumb soldier controlling 10 smart robots. What you need now is 10 engineer soldiers uh, <laughs> controlling at one dumb robot. So, we are, if you want, uh, quite far from the expectation of the dark huh? Whatever you think from the ethical standpoint, but it's not a risk, it's not for now. So, so many things that we should go for a radically inspired approach. Now, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and it's uh, not about that because it wasn't self cars that many, including me, think uh, are uh, close in time and the pos uh, possibility. Something that uh, there are still problems there. So in this nice post uh, on this blog that uh, by Rotten Brooks. Uh, uh, it lists a number of situations where today the car which uh, has not some HRI function would fail. For instance, uh, uh, a one-way street is blocked uh, by some construction work. You know what to do, the car, you go it up. 
so we so we had also issues in terms of clients uh, about uh, what which kind of approach uh, should have been good old fashion and mechatronic uh, or some new classical running style. Now I accelerate. So um, we, there are a number of issues which are not academic. For example, this, uh, you know that there was another uh, fatal accident uh, a few weeks ago, and this was the very first one. And uh, there are a number of issues that will be discussed today about the liability, so who is the guilty, right? uh, who, who should pay the damage. Uh, so all this uh, kind of um, issue should, uh, should be actually discussed. And uh, as uh, Adi was uh, saying before, uh, actually the EU Parliament is working on this. Uh, there are other issues that, that are maybe more in the focus of, of today's um, quarter, which is what I really want to see how to uh, how the, co the economy and society could be happy. It includes liabilities, but also includes the impact on jobs. There, there was a lot of uh, noise on this um, report by Osman um, and a few years ago. And if I have more time, I would say that uh, there are a number of assumptions on the technical evolution uh, of, of uh, for instance, the possibility to manipulate of a robot or to recognize objects on the table which are assumptions. We don't have the reason why I have those quick slides on reproducibility of results and benchmarking of results. We really don't know. So this is a possibility. But what we know, for example, is that there are not a number of hazardous uh, tasks that people still perform that they should not. Because probably the cost in terms of health uh, it is worse that but we people have to do more jobs today that are not have. And there is a lot of facts on this main hypothesis. What I, I want to underline uh, before uh, real to the conclusion is that maybe we may have uh, a problem uh, with unemployment, but we have this problem, which is a very big one, that we cannot solve, uh, so we cannot sustain 10 million people with nowadays technology. We have these other problems, so the rapid ice is melting. We don't know about the South Pole, it could be the same. We have uh, in Europe, but also in China, this huge problem that uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we will have a serious crop shortage of our forests. So, maybe, I don't know, okay, I thought about this. What is that? Two minutes. One, one. one. Okay, so what we can expect now are safe structural environments and those network of connected agents because everybody is looking in the single subject, uh, the car or the single robot, but really what gives them the societal benefits and the usage value are the networks and the uh, uh, instrumented smart environment that they can be smart cities, smart factory. Mm, I really promise they are to finish. So you know the situation, what happened with the internet? We, 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 yeah, they say the platform revolution and the necessity to have someone uh, guarantee that uh, the book that I'm buying is actually supplied by, by a serious supplier has led to a tremendous concentration of the of economical power in a few companies. Uh, they are two from China, but uh, that, uh, so they are six, maybe ten. But that's what happened. So there is a big uh, web seller, Amazon, there is a high pool, so the seller of up. And this is a problem. The other level, scarce maybe, and uh, this will be one of the topics today. So the so there is a lot of hype about uh, Bitcoin is a, is a speculation asset. Mm -hmm. But the underlying technology of blockchain is actually a distributed way to build the house. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of internet of mind, so to speak. But uh, it's not easy to manage this kind of, uh, of situation. Because every time that you build a new blockchain, because you know there are 
thousand, at least two thousand, something like that. You create that kind of economy, so you have a problem of how we. So a lot of regulate, potential regulation problems. So this could be the way to break the monopoly, the natural monopolies on the web. And this is something we could be the next way. So we lose the, the previous walk around. We, thanks to robotics and we did this new innovation in finance and putting together the two things, we may maybe uh, there are many models for this, the, um, so new model in economics. And uh, I want to finish, really finish here, quoting <laughs> this, this book that uh, was published very flexibly, uh, actually from the same, two people from the same institute of Frey Hoffman, who is about uh, the fact that there are a lot of what you might feel, uh, sometimes feel lost uh, in today's world because it seems that there are a lot of problems huh, that you cannot manage. Uh, actually, this also happened during the Renaissance. So they, 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 I perfectly agree with them that we are in a very similar situation. So we, we have, because uh, we have civil wars, we have uh, financial unrest, societal unrest, uh, growth and inequality. But we are also in an age of tremendous uh, development in science, technology, but also in the humanities. So people connect much more than in the past. And this was happening already once. So, last okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pablo. Thank you for your time.